Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a bad case of loving you. Come on, I made you laugh, so I'm gonna listen to your heart, okay? Here we go. You got tricked. What? Happy Halloween. Whose idea was this? I'm embarrassed now. <laughs> you guys got me. I was like I freaking just, out. Yeah. She was so she was a good little actress. She had me going so much. Out, out of fully. curiosity, were these cameras hidden? In no, your no, no. They said we're doing a little tape piece. You know, we're going to show you examining a child talking about colds and coughs. And uh, okay, great. You know, and I go to look at her ears. Ah, I'm like, <laughs> what? What? What I do? But let's okay, talk. But, let's talk about ways. But I actually do deal to with help that kids a lot. who are you scared know. of the doc right. or yeah, getting they, examined. Right. You know. Um, you know. First, you got to notice um, if you kind of. Try to anticipate if they're a little, you know, have some anxiety going on. A lot of parents, they will have the, the child have their own little doctor kit, and they practice at home. You know, the, the child plays doctor with mommy or daddy, and they listen to mommy daddy's heart, and then they bring this kid in too, right? And then they listen. The child listens to my heart, and then I listen to their heart. You know, and that's a great way to kind of uh, help them get over all that stuff. <laughs> well, obviously a lot of kids are afraid of the doctor, but what do you do when your child is scared to sleep alone? Well, that is something that Angela struggles with every single night. My son Xander is now three, and he still will not sleep in his own bed. Xander has never been able to sleep on his own. Even when he was a baby, he would just cry until we went to get him. He's only slept in his bed one time since he was born, just one. Xander tells us that he's afraid of the shadows in his room. Xander also tells us that he has nightmares. Mommy, I'm scared. Mommy, I'm scared a little bit. Sometimes I admit I don't fight it. I put him to bed around 9.30 and I'll go into his room. After I've read him a couple stories, I'll lay there with him till he falls asleep. I then sneak out of his room and within about an hour, he's back in my bed. I really want Xander to sleep in his own bed. He's kicking us all night long. I'm not getting a good night's sleep, but it kills me to see him frightened and I let him in my bed. I really just don't know what to do anymore. Angela and her son Xander are here today. Welcome. So Angela, I'm really curious, what's the, what's the biggest problem here? Is it just that you're not getting enough sleep or you're just tired of having him in your bed and it's time to move on? Or, or are you getting pressure from somebody else to get him out? The biggest problem is my, we're just not getting any sleep. He mm -hmm. gets in between my husband and I and is kicking all night long, and he's obviously not getting enough sleep either. Right, yeah. Well, you know, there's a few different ways to go about this. Now, let's go the, the strict way. Um, you know, you want to, uh, you know, be consistent. Um, when you put him to bed, try to don't let him fall asleep while you're still there. Because okay. we need to, he needs to learn eventually how to just fall asleep uh -huh. without you there. So you're reading him the bedtime story, you've got the, the, the bedtime routine going, and then before he goes to sleep, you know, you, walk, you, you leave. And then you can kind of tell him, okay, I'm gonna come back and check on you, so he kind of doesn't feel alone, and maybe you come back in five minutes, and then the next night, come back in 10 minutes, and then a week or two later, it's half an hour or two hours later, and you're coming back, and, and that can kind of transition him. That's one way of doing it. Another way is just not to worry about it and just try to figure out a way that everybody can be getting a good night's sleep while he's in your bed. And that's actually how a lot of parents do it. That's how I did it with my kids. And if you just find ways to get a good night's sleep, like have um, a, another little toddler, toddler bed at, your, at the feet, foot of your bed, all right? So he comes into your room, the door's open, he, he feels welcome, and he crawls into that bed. And if it seems like your bed, and there's a rule, you don't wake up mommy and daddy. Another way, we would put pillows between us, or even those, those big, thick swim noodles. I even had those in our bed for a while. And I called it stay in your own lane. And that would, you know, and, and it, we, we had lanes in our bed, and, and, and it did keep him from flopping around. You know, another great cool thing is this little, you know, some sort of attachment uh, item, whether it's a blanket or a pillow, and this is called the Mamuchi pillow. This is a cool little thing. Um, you can have it in your bed for a while, so it kind of picks up mom and dad's scent, and then it can, he can have it in there. So it almost feels like uh, you're in there. And it's got a little recording device that you can record your voice. Mommy loves you. Go to sleep. Oh, that's good. That's Mommy so loves you. That's really cool. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to let you guys have this. Great. We'll try Thank some you, of those Andrew. things. Thank you. Thank you.